ξενούμε σήμερα. Right, ladies and gentlemen, comrades. We are hosting the last session of dialogue in this interesting two-day meeting, which is primarily of dialogue organized by the uh, Euro team of the left. With the participation, starting from my right to your left, Andros Kiprianou, Secretary General of the AKEL, Gabi Tsima, Chairwoman of the left, uh, Euro left team, Declan Kearney, his secretary with Sinn Féin, and Panos Skurletis, secretary of the Central Committee of Syriza. Now, before I um, give the floor to the participants of this panel, I would like to ask for your indulgence because we will play a six-minute video with interventions from the Secretary General of the Communist Party of France, Fabien Roussel, from the President of the Party of the Swedish Left, Sjöstedt, and from the Secretary of the United Left of Spain, Alberto Garçon. Now, let's watch the video and then I'll give the floor to the speakers on the panel. Je voudrais remercier les camarades de Syriza de nous avoir invité et d'avoir pris l'initiative d'organiser cette conférence. Now, I would like to thank uh, the comrades of Syriza for their invitation and their initiative to organize this um, um, conference for the left forces and discuss the question of the challenges of Europe this period. Now, I can't be with you this two, on this two-day conference because, as you know, our country is going through a social crisis, a social movement that is unprecedented. And it is this weekend that the Communist Party of France selected to present the ten proposals that we have for France and the French in order to exit this crisis. These ten proposals have to do with issues of social justice, taxation tax justice, democracy and protection of public services. The purchasing power is a very strong matter for the pensioners who have worked all their lives and now do not have the means to live with dignity. The issue of the purchasing power is the same way for the workers who, despite the minimum wages in France, cannot actually make ends meet through the month. The issue of public services and public hospitals that do not manage to correspond to the needs of health. Now, all these issues are also raised at the European level, and we can see that clearly in the issue of the purchasing power, democracy, the respect of decisions of each people, of the popular sovereignty, as well as the issue of civil services in order for one to respond to the needs of everyone and the protection of each citizen. These questions today, we truly know that we cannot raise them, we cannot respond them within the framework of the European um, treaties, the budget treaties. It is the reason why we're struggling hard in order to question the logic of these treaties, to exit these European treaties and to build others together, because we understand that it is very important to respect the sovereignty of each people. And in order to do th that, we need to work together for the convergences and to build this democratic Europe. The Europe of the workers, the Europe that will make possible to deal with, sim with significant challenges, the issue of work, the issue of the environment, of the industry, are issues for which, on which we need to work together. It is why it is necessary to create a correlation of power within the Euro European Union of all the progressive powers of the work um, world and the creation in order to offer this hope to build finally a Europe that is more just, more human and more pacifist, capable of responding to the climates and environmental challenges, but also to the expectations of each citizen of the EU to work with to live with dignity. The French Communist Party will always be at your disposal to work with other progressive powers on all these issues, which is why I wish you good success on the works of your conference. And I would like to reiterate again and express my um, congratulations and uh, allow and say that we're fully available to work with you on any subject that might arise. Difference, difference in Syriza, difference in the European left. 
I wish I had been in Athens with you at your important meetings, but I'm home in Sweden campaigning ahead of the European elections, and it looks good. I think we'll do a better result than the last time, as we did in the national election. And for sure, the European cooperation needs some fundamental change. We need a strong cooperation in Europe that puts people first. We know when the crisis hit Europe, they saved the banks, but they sacrificed the people in Greece, in many other countries. And we want to do it the other way around. We want those responsible to pay the bills and want a European cooperation that puts people first. We need a European cooperation that puts the climate before profits. Now the European Union works the other way around. We don't have too much time. We have a couple of years to save the climate and the left we are the ones to do it. We also need an alternative to the present right-wing policies in the EU. A true alternative. Something that gives people hope. When the racists and the fascists spread their fear and anger, we will be the ones to bring hope to the peoples of Europe. That's our task and it's an important one. We look forward to our future cooperation. All the best. Hola, soy Alberto Garzón, coordinador federal de Izquierda Unida en España. Quería mandar un saludo a todos los compañeros y compañeras de Siriza, de nuestro partido hermano en Grecia, y mandarles también nuestro apoyo, nuestro apoyo para todas las luchas que vienen frente a un complejo problema que enfrentamos en nuestro, en nuestro país, en el país en Grecia, en España, en la periferia de Europa, pero también en el conjunto de Europa y en todos los países occidentales. Estamos viendo cómo crecen las políticas neoliberales impuestas desde la Unión Europea, estamos viendo cómo crecen propuestas autoritarias, fascistas en todas partes del mundo. Necesitamos unir a la izquierda, necesitamos que los partidos de izquierda con principios y valores de igualdad, libertad y fraternidad sean lo más fuerte posible. Por eso deseamos desde Izquierda Unida el mejor resultado para este partido, el partido hermano Siriza, en las futuras convocatorias y también en la mejor manera de organizarse, porque las victorias de Siriza son también las victorias de la clase trabajadora en España, en Portugal, en Italia y también para el conjunto de Europa. Mucha suerte, muy buen trabajo, lo necesitamos. So I believe that the uh, interventions of the uh, three leaders of three uh, left uh, wing parties is the um, right starting uh, point for our discussion in this panel. We've heard strong messages uh, for a left-wing common action on a series of common problems uh, by three uh, leaders from the north, Sweden, from the center of Europe, France, and from the European south, from Spain. And uh, this is an ideal starting point because this um, geographic diversity and the need for common action was also expressed and will be expressed uh, in this panel by uh, the leaders of the parties represented here and by uh, the president of um, the um, European um, uh, group, uh, Parliament, uh, European Parliament group for uh, the left. And um, uh, she's the only woman of the panel. Um, of course, uh, I always struggle and we always struggle from, for an equal participation of women in public life. And uh, here uh, in our uh, group in the European Parliament, we are proud because we have a majority of women. Out of 52 members, 27 are women. So I would give the floor now to the uh, Secretary of the uh, Central Committee of Syriza, Panos Kourletis. Dear friends and comrades, dear Gabi, Declan, Andrew and Dimitris, uh, we are at the end of a very interesting two-day conference. As you might have seen, the panels have touched upon uh, crucial, uh, crucial issues that uh, relate to the present and the future of Europe. 
It's not the first time that we have this kind uh, of conference. And I believe that right now it would be very important for us to highlight uh, the significant importance, the distinct uh, presence of the uh, group, parliament group of the left. Uh, and this has made it a diverse um, group, a diverse presence within the European Parliament that makes exceptional uh, proposals and uh, adopts uh, its uh, own stance when it comes to the developments in Europe. Uh, but there is a particularity. We are only uh, two months, about two months before the elections of the 26th of May. Therefore, today's discussion could allow us to evaluate uh, the previous period and to see how things are today in Europe, what we have to say to the European uh, people, to the European citizens, uh, in view of the elections. We usually say that the elections will be critical and will be very important. Uh, however, I believe that uh, in this moment in history, those uh, elections are very important for the present and the future of Europe. It is a critical and important crossroads. And the path we will choose as a whole uh, within the European Union will determine uh, the future of Europe and the existence of Europe in the future. Not only the existence of Europe as we knew it, but whether it will keep existing. A few days ago, an international meeting was held by uh, with the participation of President Bulban here in Athens, there was this was a meeting held under the initiative of the Institute, um, where Mrs. Katselli uh, participates in representation of Greece. So the uh, data and the evidence given there uh, was very interesting when it comes to the characteristics of today's Europe. So, in summary, the conclusion is that the uh, dominance of neoliberalism in previous years, neoliberal Europe gave birth to new inequalities. This is a conclusion that uh, can be witnessed by uh, everyone. We are at a um, situation, an extreme situation, that has had an effect on uh, political relations and political trends after a hegemony of over 10 years of neoliberal strategies and uh, austerity, extreme austerity uh, policies. This situation combined with uh, the um, refugee and migration crisis and the way in which Europe and the remaining developed world uh, addressed uh, migration flows has clearly uh, created the conditions for the rise of the far uh, right. This is no longer a future risk, but rather a reality that is in front of us. Uh, the rationale of uh, nationalism, uh, neo-fascist phenomena, racism, uh, all these ideologies are now strengthened, are gaining ground and are linked to the policy and the measures adopted in the previous years. This policy actually pushed people and especially 
people from the popular classes of Europe towards uh, the far right. So I believe that if we do not start uh, based on this assumption, we will not be able to move forward. I believe that as European left, we are among the political uh, groups that are not sur surprised by the situation. We were the ones who long before uh, the crisis and the beginning of the crisis, and I'm not only talking about uh, the Greek crisis, which uh, was a rather extreme crisis, but I'm m referring to the crisis um, that uh, emerged after the uh, collapse of Lehman Brothers in 2008, as experienced by the European Union as a whole. We were the ones that had warned the world about the characteristics of a neoliberal globalized model, about the banking bubble, um, and despite the fact that everyone uh, believed that uh, the economy would grow forever and it w will be able to cover uh, banking risks and banking products that were bubbles, well, a moment came when uh, we had to uh, pay the, the bill and the banking sector uh, had was the first to have to pay the price. So given that we are in this political system, this burden was passed to the European economies, to the public sector and by extension to the citizens and workers. So at the center uh, of these policies, of austerity policies that were expressed through specific programs in a series of European countries, so at the center of these policies um, was employment, labor. Uh, the workers uh, were, became the victims of this crisis. Uh, their rights were compromised in many cases, and especially in Greece. Uh, there was a chaotic situation in um, the labor uh, market, in the labor sector. I believe that this is something that the left had already identified um, for a long time now. And this gives us a confidence, a confidence to go to the European citizens uh, today and tell them that what happened was not an issue of fate, but it was a result of the policies implemented in the past years. We were the ones to say that there are deficits uh, in this incomplete uh, monetary union because it is a paradox in the global economic history to have a common currency, to have strict uh, monetary rules, and at the same time, to have huge inequalities in all other, other aspects of economic life. So based on this paradox reality, the real inequalities of economies are augmented, especially in periods of crisis. And this is why you must remember that we said that uh, the uh, surpluses of the strong EU economies are the deficits of the weak peripheral uh, economies. We had talked about uh, the democracy deficit in the European Union. We said uh, and we talked about how can the strongest uh, instrument um, in uh, Europe right now, Eurogroup, uh, could remain informal. Uh, a, a body that is now uh, applying policies and adopting policies um, for all member states in the European Union, but it is an informal uh, instrument. And it's not directly elected by the European citizens like the European Parliament. The European Parliament is still weak, whereas uh, the uh, European budget is very small and cannot uh, serve its purpose. So I believe that 
for reasons that are not only related to developments in Europe, we are now um, amidst a European uh, economic crisis. This uh, situation uh, gave birth to new inequalities, and now we see that a large part of citizens in Europe, many citizens in Europe, are question are are asking themselves, is it uh, worth uh, defending uh, the ideal of a united Europe? I believe that our left, the European left, uh, will have to undertake this burden. And in the past years, we had a very targeted and systematic criticism of the way in which uh, Europe uh, approached this matter. And so we can talk about what can happen in the future. The first thing that we understand and we know, all of us here in this panel, and not only us, and this is something quite positive that has happened uh, in recent years. So what we all understand is that there is a need uh, to stop uh, the rise of racist views and the far right. And this is something that is not only uh, argued by the left and the progressive left, but also um, the majority of social democracy, after many years, after many decades, has now decided to open a discussion, a debate, a strategic debate regarding uh, dominant economic policies. Uh, the European uh, social democracy has a great share of responsibility because, uh, of course, it is uh, part of the European uh, People's Party and the Christian Democrats, and they actually served uh, the European policies of recent years. And they are responsible because, to a great extent, there was a complementarity between them, both in Greece, uh, in the specific situations that exist, uh, conditions that existed in Greece from the end of the 80s, uh, the um, PASOK party expressed uh, social democracy but um, was more and more similar with the, the new democracy. And they actually created a coalition government during the crisis and they implemented the most extreme austerity policy to be implemented in a European country. And the results are well known, and we are still experiencing the wounds of this um, of this policy. So it's quite uh, positive that after many years, there is a large part of European uh, socialists, uh, social democrats, that want to move away from neoliberalism. And I believe that this is an opportunity in order to open up a substantial dialogue and to create um, a joint uh, stance, a joint position with these forces in order to defend ourselves against uh, conservatists. Uh, conservatism now is expressed through a combination of economic neoliberalism and far-right uh, rhetoric and rationale. So this is the new face of the European left. And, of course, uh, the um, environment, the ecology forces can be part of this uh, group of forces because they um, criticize uh, developments uh, in relation to the productive model and they can make uh, important contributions which I, I believe will allow us to create jointly a new European uh, progressive movement which cannot uh, be in the defense. It cannot be based on just confronting the proposals of our opponent. If we want to inspire new forces, if we want to become convincing for the popular uh, classes, we need to submit an alternative proposal. 
So based on the criticism and uh, on the arguments that we presented in recent years and about the way that the European project has developed, we now have to start uh, talking about a new, a different Europe, a Europe that has less inequalities, more solidarity, a deep democracy, increased European budget, a Europe that will um, reverse the um, cause uh, of um, depreciation of labor and uh, focusing on radical proposals. And I say that uh, also talking to the members of Syriza. We have just exited the last memorandum. And this is very important. Now we must start analyzing again. We must, we must start making alternative proposals like we did before the crisis. Because for us, the concept of success, for us, for the left of Syriza, success does not end with the completion of a program that was never our program. In its core, it never stopped being a neoliberal economic program. Of course, we managed to use all the possibilities that we had within the framework of a very um, bad force correlation in order to implement and to create uh, an elementary welfare state in Greece in order to protect the uninsured, in order to create a social solidarity income. All this is very important. And we know that if another um, party, if another government was in power, uh, we wouldn't have all that. But this is not enough. This kind of, su of success is not enough for us. I believe that uh, in the last months, we have been opening up a different path, a path that takes us away from austerity policies, and we must deepen uh, our efforts. The discussion that is taking place in Europe right now is also taking place in Greece. That is the effort to create a left progressive movement that will be able to um, gather all uh, the um, active movements in order to create a good correlation and to create a majority of social and political forces that will be able to implement big changes. You know, here in Greece, uh, we like talking about ourselves. We think, uh, sometimes we, we analyze ourselves too much. And we never realize that we are the only government in the left uh, that comes from the radical left. We, and we have a double obligation, a double challenge, both uh, towards the European citizens and the Greek citizens. So we must succeed. What happened was quite original and quite peculiar. It's unprecedented. A government of the radical left implementing a policy that was forced upon it and it said, I, I do not adopt it, I know the limits and I'm trying to mm, reduce the negative effects for my citizens by opening up a different path. I believe that we have succeeded in many ways. In some aspect may, aspects, maybe not. But what is certain is that we are still inspired by the um, big values of the left for less exploitation, increased solidarity, social justice, more democracy. All this remains timely today, not only for Greece, but for Europe as a whole. I, I'm a bit influenced from something that happened. I just uh, well, I was just informed uh, about the conference of the Gen General Confederation of Labour here 
in Ka it was held in the city of Kalamata and I'm really saddened because in Europe in Europe where we have no left government where the left has low our percentages in some countries however there are trade unions and where trade unions are mobilized uh, they have participation and there is a strike and people feel it. In Greece, uh, there's a paradox. We have many strikes, but no one realizes it. They, they, we're talking about fake st uh, strikes, like fake news. We have fake strikes. And after many years, right now, and this is a responsibility of the trade unionist uh, forces of the Communist Party and of the um, bureaucracy of the trade union bureaucracy uh, within YSA, within the Confederation of Workers. Right now, there is no conference of the Confederation of uh, Workers. So, right now, there is a fragmentation of the trade union uh, movement. And I believe that our forces must take the lead. We must contact uh, associations, uh, we must uh, take the issue uh, in our hands and we must try uh, to revitalize the um, trade unionist movement because a, a socialist uh, government cannot move forward without a real uh, social basis if without the support of the labor forces within society and uh, also something that has to do with my competences and without having a party uh, that has a specific role, its own discourse uh, and a party that combines all the ideas and that can serve as a melting pot of the different messages that we receive from society. History has shown that it's not enough to be in government without having the uh, social, the real pillars that will allow you uh, to get ideas, a real program, um, a left a compass that will show you the way. I will not uh, give you more uh, arguments. My fellow speakers here in this parliament have the advantage that they are participating in the European Parliament and they can uh, be more brief um, in their uh, presentations. I tried to be brief, but, well, I don't know if I, if I made it. I, I, thank you. Right. Thank you very much, Comrade Panos. I believe that you enriched the whole rationale and problematic that started um, from the videos that we heard of the three leaders of European left uh, parties for the dimension and for the meaning of the party, the left-wing party, at a time of governance and for the role of the labor union um, associations and the movements at a time that we have the left in power, and for the need, despite this multiplicity and our differences amongst ourselves, for the left to find common actions, because it is only through a strong, a powerful left that can work together can we intercept and stop this, well, combination of uh, extreme right and um, um, neoliberalism that uh, threatens Europe with uh, an about turn. I think it's uh, the best time now to give the floor to Gabi Tsima, who is uh, the chairperson of the only umbrella of the left in Europe and the European Parliament, which is uh, GUE NGL. Now, there, we are trying for this very colourful left to invest to the addition and the multiplication rather than the subtraction, subtraction and division. Thank you very much, Dimitri. Uh, I would like to, to thank you for inviting me for the start of um, the electoral campaign here in Greece. And uh, it, it's an honor for me to be here, also to support my friends from Syriza. Because um, one thing it's very clear, um, the European left is only existing 
and um, only existing and working together also in the European Parliament because of Syriza. And I would like also to thank especially Dimitri and also the other comrades from Syriza in our group that they are supporting this kind of uh, project of cooperation between different, very, very different left progressive parties and movements we have inside the European Union. And if you look to, to the reality, uh, we have to, to say that uh, the European left is the only project, the European left in, in, the, in the European Parliament is the only project where members from so different political traditions, political understandings, from the left side are cooperating in such a very, very hard way. Well, sometimes with problems, it's clear, but also uh, using the possibility of this group that we are able to, to build bridges between the different political parties. If you look to, to some of our member states, to Italy, to Spain, to Portugal, we have different parties from one, um, from one member state in our group. And that means that some of these parties in their own member state doesn't say that they are working together in our group. But in our group, they work together. And they learn to, to work together. And that's why I think um, we have to do a lot to stabilize this group as the platform, as a platform inside the European Parliament, in the European Union, on the level of the European Union, on European level, to work together and to bring together, build up together alliances between different political left and progressive uh, forces in, in Europe. Um, of course, we all know, and uh, you had also the debate today in the afternoon and the whole day, I think so, about the situation in Europe and in the European Union, and I don't want to repeat what you discussed before, but I would like to say, okay, yes, we are in a very, very strong situation. It's not clear what the future will bring. And looking to that, what we have seen last week in the last months uh, concerning the Brexit debate, uh, that um, one member state decided to leave the European Union, that we are close now to, to the deadline, the date when um, uh, UK has to leave or not to leave, we don't know exactly what will be. Um, you see that um, there are different expectations also looking to the European Union. And I would like to say, we as left and progressive people, we have one challenge. We have also to explain how the European Union f is functioning. We have also to explain how can we bring together and coordinate our, our fights on the, on the local level, the national level and the European level. Because in the past, we didn't so. We only explained, and um, I look to, to Labour Party in, in UK, we always explained that the European Union is a big enemy. The European Union is responsible for all our problems we have also in, in our, on the regional level and we have also on the national level. Um, we have a strong poverty, we have a split, a social split, economic split, between the member states, inside the member states, and that's only the European level. We didn't explain that there is a combination on the ruling class on, uh, working on the national level and on the European Union. And we didn't explain that the European institutions are ruled by the member states. And we have to explain that, because otherwise we have illusions how to fight against poverty, the social split, how to fight for a more social European Union, for a European Union of solidarity, a Euro European Union that is fighting for peace and not for, um, yet not for an aggressive uh, foreign policy uh, for, for saving the, own, the resources and the interests in, in the global sphere of, uh, in, in our world. 
And I think we have to learn where we have to find the real points to change policy, where we have to, uh, to look on and to, to say very clearly, in this way we can change the life of the people in our member states and in the European Union and in Europe. And that we have this responsibility to explain, to explain that the right extremists, the nationalists, are not able to give an illusion that they have the alternative to the neoliberal European Union, that we can explain how it could be changed, the European Union and our life in our member states, and that we can't split between, and that we can't say we have to put against that what we would like to, go, uh, to have on the national level and that we would like to have on the European Union level. Looking also back to, to the Brexit, it, we, we all can see that in, in, uh, in the years of cooperation, of European integration, uh, our economies, our financial life, our social life, it's so um, combined that you can't uh, destroy it with one cut. You can't split it with one cut. And um, looking to that, what we, are see, what we see, I would like to remember what does it mean to fight only against the European Union, saying the European Union is our, our enemy. I'm, I, I'm coming from, from the former GDR, uh, from Eastern Germany. And I have seen in 1989 what does it mean if a system, a social, economic, financial system is, will break from one day to another day. And what does it mean? It means especially that the poorest of the poor people have to take over the burden. They are not able to take their money, their investments to go out, to, to save it, to bring it on other banks, to, to go in other countries, all looking to, to UK, to change the, um, yes, the, the place of their investments from, from London to Belfast, or to go to uh, Singapore or other countries, or to, to ask for uh, citizenship of a member states of the EU, um, to, to save their own interests. Always the poorest of the poor people, the majority of the people, they have to take the burden for a policy um, that is against, against the people, against the interests of the employed people and also of the poor people. And for that, I think we have also to speak about the consequences of what we are demanding. And I think sometimes it's too easy to say, oh, our strongest demand is to leave the Eurozone or the European Union. We, have, we need a plan B to leave it. We need, uh, we need the Brexit, we need the Grexit, we need the Lexit, we need the Frexit. All this is what we had in the last years. It will not help us. It will not help us to, uh, to fulfill our main duty to fight in the interest of the people. They gave us a mandate to ensure living conditions, working conditions, and to, uh, to create alliances to change also the force relations inside the European Union to be stronger, to work together as Europeans, as left Europeans. And I think modern left policy has to, to look especially on humanity and also on activities of solidarity. And we have to, to take up, I would like to say, three different issues. One is we have to stop the death in the Mediterranean. Uh, we have to scandalize it. We have to, uh, to give the rescuers and the refugees our fuel support and solidarity. 
And the principle of rescue must have a priority against all the demands to criminalize traffickers and also fight terrorists. Our first demand is to support, to give solidarity to the people that are in danger. The second one, inside the EU, we have consequently to fight poverty, social split, and the destroyment of the, our living conditions and the conditions of, of nature. We have to, to fight against any kind of um, repression against people. And the third one I would like to, to raise is we have to support all the initiatives, the different initiatives of left and progressive people. Especially we have to be in solidarity with these people, with these forces that fight under concrete circumstances to change the relation of forces who would like to strengthen the, the left in the European Union and in the Union. And I think these three, three issues together would be the best answer to the right wing, to the na nationalists. We have seen it now since, I think it was on, on, on Thursday, yes? when the president of the European Parliament, Mr. Tajani, a former press uh, officer of, uh, of Berlusconi, when we had to criticize him and also to the demands that he has to reject, because he was saying Mussolini was not the most bad man, uh, people or leader during the fascism. He did also very, very important things and useful things, especially for the infrastructure. And we have to say, what, it, what seems so um, as, a, as a participation of or as a speech uh, by Tajani looking to, to the Italian elections, um, this is a change, is a change of the atmosphere it's a change of the, of the relation, force relations inside the European Union. Running now to the European election, we have to consider that we have to face a very strong attack, not only by right-wing forces from, uh, from Italy, from uh, France, from Austria, from Poland and others. We have, we have to face a global right-wing change and attack. We know exactly that uh, the, um, uh, that a lot of people uh, around the, the sphere of uh, Trump are now working for right-wing global alliances and supporting also uh, right-wing forces and parties to take over the power on the, in the European level and in more member states in the European Union. And for that, we have to, to, to say what are our alternatives, what are our answers, what are our priorities. And I would like to, to name or to quote, especially my friend, the French philosopher Etienne Balibar, who said, we know exactly that the European integration is indispensable, and we know that the European Union, so the, we, uh, as the European Union is today, is not acceptable. The, the European Union of today is not able to, to bring us forward in a solidarity sense of European integration. And he said also, we exactly know that between the neoliberal and the socialist orientation for the future of European Union and Europe, there is no balance, there is no middle way. And that means we have to make clear our position, our uh, position for, for, an, of, for the future of Europe. And we have to, to reflect on that that we learned from 1941 from the Manifesto of Ventotene. What was, was that? The only answer to avoid for every time wars between members, between the states in Europe is a socialist Europe. 
This must be our answer, and we have to say it clear. And for that, I would like only to, to bring on the end, in the end that we are able to, to create alliances, new alliances, in a, in a very um, global way. First, we have to see the European Union was very, very active uh, looking to the Paris deal fighting against the climate change. And the European Union was also very active to, to, to sign um, the global and the UN declaration on sustainable development till 2030. What we have now to do, and what, is, what should be a chance also to create alliances, is to say we have to stick on that, that the European Union is working on that, that European Union is realizing uh, this, two, uh, this two global agreements. Because it, the realizing of these two global agreements will change also our living conditions, working conditions inside the European Union, in Europe, and in a global way. And it creates a new base for new alliances. I would like to only to, 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 to make a reference to um, the, the movement Fridays for Future. That's on this base. So it's, it's a total another way for creating alliances. We invited the Greens, the Social Democrats, and we as a left group inside the European Parliament, we invited last week the initiatives um, of, of this um, movement from more than 19, 19 member states. And they were joining, they were in the European Parliament, and they were also going for a discussion, discussion we had them in our, in our group last week. And it was very, very interesting. And the main thing was that we showed we are here to hear what you have to say. We will not misuse your engagement. You have to say, and we have to think together with you and to discuss this together with you what we can do here on the European level. That we have to do. And then in the end, I would like to, to make only some, um, some proposals what we could uh, also raise during the electoral campaign, also to, uh, to go forward for creating alliances with trade unions, social networks, social alliances on the European level. Uh, I think we, we should uh, discuss also about the implementation of social and ecologic minimum standards. I would like also to propose that we discuss about the progression clause. That means that no European Union law could violate, could bring in danger European standards. That means the minimum standards that we have on a legal way can't be violated anymore by nobody. No institution of the EU has a right to undermine European Union standards. Never. We have to, we, we could also work on that to create a, a transnational European fund to support strikes uh, of transnational um, enterprises and companies. This would be an expression of solidarity. We could do it. And this would be also a way to work together with trade unions from different member states and saying, we understood we have a European and we have global organized companies, but we will organize um, the resistance and the cooperation between the workers um, in the member states, or also in a transnational way. And I think uh, we could bring in a lot, a lot of proposals, especially on the social and also employment rights uh, in, in our way, in our fight for the next European election. And for this, we should start to create new alliances and also a new political culture of cooperation. Because this would be a precondition that this alliance will have a future. Thank you.
Θα ήθελα να ευχαριστήσω την I would like to thank Gabby Zimmer not only for the very important and interesting things she mentioned contributing to the dialogue we are having uh, tonight, but for yet one more thing. I would like to thank her for her effort, for the energy she has dedicated all these years as president of uh, TUE and GL. I would like to ensure you uh, publicly that this role, the role of the uh, chairwoman uh, of uh, the uh, GUENGL uh, is not easy. It's a very difficult task. It's uh, difficult to bring together such a diverse group. And therefore, I would like to thank her. I would like to thank Mrs. Timmer publicly because I believe she has contributed a lot to reinforcing, strengthening the voice of GUENGL. A few years ago, the left of Germany, Die Linke, was created and it became a part of the parliament of the United Germany after, for the first time after many decades. And despite the war and the anti-left and anti-communist hysteria, it now has 10% rates. And this is not a simple thing for Germany. And whenever there was a coalition between uh, the left, the Greens, and the Social Democrats, and it happened in some states of Germany, there was high pressure towards the Greens and the Social Democrats saying that they are communists. They became communists. Uh, there was a hysteria. because, And I note that because the experience of a big party because this is a big party of the, of the European left, so the experience of the Linke is valuable and it will continue to be uh, in the future. And now this is an opportunity to give the floor to the leader of one of the biggest and most historic uh, parties of the left in Europe, uh, our comrade, uh, Mr. Kiprianos. Akel is a party with a very long history. one of the biggest parties of the left in Europe. I'm very glad because as time goes by, the links between Syriza and Akel are reinforced and our common approach and common struggles are also uh, reinforced. I'm also glad because Akel is continuing original internationalist left traditions and is probably the only force in Cyprus right now who is defending consistently the need to resolve the Cyprus uh, issue uh, based on um, the bicommunal, bizonal uh, uh, federation solution. And this is very important because in their electoral list they will have a candidate from the Tur Turkish uh, Cypriot community, and this is very important. Thank you. Um, comrade, you have the floor. Thank you. I would like to congratulate uh, Syriza for organizing this very interesting uh, conference, and I would like to thank you for inviting me here today. And with the opportunity of having here uh, the president of the uh, GUE and I would like to thank her and I would like to thank the entire group for the consistency um, they uh, are showing in supporting the struggle of the Cypriot uh, people in their effort for reunification. Our uh, group is very small, but uh, let me say that in many cases it achieves uh, results to the benefit of Cyprus and not only. And uh, sometimes the results are bigger uh, and, and are um, more compared to, their, uh, to, to the members that we have, to the MEPs that we have in the European Parliament. Now, uh, I will start talking about my subject. First of all, uh, the group of the left has the opportunity, has the possibility to have an effect because it is based on ideas and values 
that on the one hand unite the left and on the other hand they express every progressive citizen. Um, we are talking about peace, internationalism, solidarity uh, towards all people that fight for uh, justice. And uh, the same goes for social and economic issues. So today, um, dear friends, uh, dear friend Panos Kourletis, only a few people deny that the European Union is at an impasse and uh, that there are explosive uh, social uh, conditions. Uh, the uh, es- estimates and the warnings of the left uh, that have been voiced over the past years regarding the capitalist uh, nature and the problematic course of Europe have been ignored. Uh, systematically by the neoliberal uh, right and by uh, the social democrats. It has been confirmed today that the left uh, was telling the truth and is telling the truth uh, about those issues. It is a force that is critical and uh, exercises documented uh, criticism uh, towards uh, the policies of the European Union. So we want a Europe for the many a Europe that serves um, the uh, interests of the workers and the young people, promotes democracy, peace, uh, combats uh, racism, xenophobia, protects the environment, and promotes social justice. This is the vision of the left for the Europe. That is a Europe that has a different philosophy than uh, the one uh, promoted by its current leaders. How is it possible that the uh, European Union can find 13 billion uh, euro from the budget, European budget, in order to invest in the war, in the military industry? And this amount may triple through the contributions of its member states. And at the same time, there are millions of homeless people and over 20% of its population is at the threshold of, of poverty. And this is a question that we must answer. How is it possible that there has been, um, we have we have reduced the rights in the labor market and we have many people who are working but are poor. And at the same time, the leaders of the European Union cannot propose tangible measures uh, with regard to promoting the social rights of the citizens, uh, but are just um, talking in theory. How can we make interventions in the Middle East? How can we deepen our relationship with NATO and sell um, military equipment to uh, totalitarian regimes and at the same time ask ourselves where do refugees come from? What can be the fate of democracy when multinationals determine decisions uh, within the European institutions and when the voice of the people is lost, the voice of the trade unions, of the citizens, of the movements? How European was uh, the uh, recent suppression of uh, the demonstrations and uh, uh, the uh, different um, um, voices uh, heard in France? And this is something uh, that has been admitted by people who have not been close to the left until now. However, the European Union and the dominant powers within the European Union want to continue with the same recipe uh, in the same path. In the recent Congress of the European People's Party, the leaders of the right uh, declared that they were proud for the measures they had adopted in recent years, that is, for the memorandums, the uh, austerity measures, uh, the cutbacks in salaries and privatizations. And in some countries where they are in government, they show the real uh, plans for the future. In Austria, uh, where they have a coalition government with a far right, they abolished the eight-hour work day and they imposed a 12-hour work. In Hungary, Uh, regardless of whether Orban was uh, expelled recently, his government uh, prohibited strikes 
uh, facilitated legally layoffs and its social policy includes fines to homeless people that sleep on benches. So this is unthinkable. And I'm sad to say that it is within this political family that the Anastasiadis government belongs, the government of Cyprus. Dear comrades, for us, the left is not and should not be a power, a force that reveals and denounces um, policies and injustices wherever it com they come from. We cannot only protest. The left should have proposals for today and mainly a vision for tomorrow. We must lead the way, we must make proposals, we must uh, voice our demands, we must struggle, uh, we must have a vision and we must inspire. Uh, this is our goal and this is how we evaluate our actions and uh, how we make our commitments. What we want today for Europe first of all, is social justice and social solidarity. Uh, we want fundamental changes because we want economies in Europe to uh, be for the many, for those who produce wealth and not for the banks and the elites. Uh, we are uh, uh, we want a different uh, growth, a growth that respects the specific character of the economy of its member state, creating permanent and dignified uh, jobs. Uh, we want a reinforcement of social protection for the weak. Uh, we want uh, the rights, uh, the labor rights to be restored and the um, uh, safeguarding of human uh, and uh, the, of human rights and the rights of the workers. Uh, we want uh, the European Union uh, to uh, exceed and to support uh, the European Charter of Fundamental Rights. We want gender equality in society society, in economy, in uh, the workplace and in public life. It is worth noting that uh, GUE NDL uh, during this uh, term, this mandate, is the only group that has an equal number of men and women in the European Parliament uh, without having a quota. And this is very important. This shows that it's part of our DNA to promote uh, gender equality. Uh, we also claim solidarity policies to refugees who seek asylum in Europe and solidarity among member states. Solidarity uh, in order to address racism, uh, xenophobic and uh, far-right uh, strategies of oppression, uh, militarization and a fortress Europe. So against all that, we request a system for refugee accommodation in all member states without exception based on the population and the capacity of its state so that everyone may uh, fulfill uh, their uh, moral and legal responsibilities. And the left must be the voice of those who have no voice. We also want um, a strong environmental policy beyond uh, the goals of the market with more ambitious goals than the ones of the Paris uh, Agreement in order to address climate change. We want progressive policy for the well-being of animals uh, against uh, the, um, human, the abuse of humans uh, and the legislation that sets barriers. Isn't it outrageous for the parliament to um, request uh, the abolishment of uh, whale hunting and having the uh, People's Party, the European uh, People's Party, trying to avoid it? So, for all these reasons, the left and uh, GUE and TL, uh, must be reinforced uh, politically uh, after, uh, th during the elections in order to strengthen uh, the voice of citizens in Europe. But there is yet another reason, which is probably the most urgent one. Europe uh, is uh, facing a risk 
a danger that is actually uh, part of the darkest moments of its history. The moments of the far right and the fascism are being organized uh, in order to uh, enter uh, the future European Parliament and impose their ideology. They are pretending to be anti-systemic, but in reality, allow me to say that they are actually supporting uh, the right, uh, the right wing, and the system. And a, a good example is the example of the statements by Mr. Tajani. And of course, uh, the crimes of the far right uh, in uh, Europe are, are still alive. So this is the darkest part of the system. This uh, brings hatred, violence, racism, extreme anti-communism, um, abusing women and homophobia, confusing patriotism with extreme nationalism, a sick nationalism. Patriotism means to love your country. Nationalism means to hate others. And it's not one and the same. We're talking about two different things. Allow me to say that, unfortunately, uh, they are encouraged by the rise of Trump uh, to power in the US. Um, uh, the, he's their role model. And they also reinforced by the, fa the uh, fact that the right-wing parties are moving towards the far right. So the risk is higher because uh, far right uh, movements and parties are in government in some member states. In order to achieve all things, all these things and all, uh, all our goals, we need different policies. We need another Europe. And towards this direction, we must collaborate all uh, the forces uh, that share the same views. We must create a broad front of parties, progressive left parties, communist parties, uh, which will struggle together uh, for the uh, small and big problems faced by uh, European societies in order to defend ourselves against uh, neo-fascism and to give a future and perspective to our citizens. To conclude, let me say that the peoples uh, of our continent have a tradition and a history, and this is our heritage. Uh, through revolutions that shook the world, through struggles that led us to the establishment of the rights of workers, through visions and values that look ahead. So, based on this heritage, we must work uh, and we must move forward for the upcoming European elections, uh, convinced that we will do better and that we will work in order to change things to the direction of a Europe of peace, democracy and social justice. For a Europe, as uh, someone said earlier, a Europe of the people, as we say for decades now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Comrade Andros Kiprianou. I would like to keep as a take-home message uh, what he said, that we do not only need to be a movement of protest, we need to have proposals for today and a vision for tomorrow. The risk of... Um, well, European Union backtracking um, as a result of this um, meta right that is moving towards the far right and the extreme right and the need for a widest possible front around proposals for radical change because the left can gain ground in the conscience of the people only if it's a power of radical change of the existing Europe which increasingly disappoints and um, most citizens do not like it. Now I'd like to pass the floor to comrade Declan Kearney, his secretary general of yet another historical party of uh, the Republican left with a long-standing period of struggles for independence, for democracy 
who is, uh, which rather is one of the most um, strong pillars of this confederate team of the um, um, European uh, left. And I would like to point out before I actually give him the floor that um, Sinn Féin campaigned particularly in Northern Ireland against Brexit pointing out prophetically if I may say so the negative impacts for on rather social rights on human rights on democratic freedoms by pointing out the fake campaign of the Brexiteers and that's those who will take the fall and pay is the weak should something like that actually happen and you see in Northern Ireland the vast majority over 55% correct me if I'm wrong Declan uh, voted against Brexit and now with the decisive contribution of the Sinn Féin and under Gabby's leadership we're making a huge struggle as the Euro team of the left and we have managed like Andro said for the vast majority of the European Parliament to support positions that the Sinn Féin uh, brings to this dialogue in order to avoid a Brexit without agreement or a hard Brexit that will be paid and borne and shouldered by the weakest in the society of Northern Ireland and which will abort, annul, nullify a great conquest which is the Belfast Agreement, the Black Friday Agreement that opened the road for political dialogue and kept open the vision for a democratic, reunited Ireland. Comrades, Declan, Kearney, you have the floor. Thank you, Demetrius, for that introduction. It's, it's an honour to share the platform with yourself here in Athens this evening, and alongside Pano, with Gabby and with Andros. And I bring to your conference and to the comrades of Syriza the uh, solidarity and the best wishes of the Sinn Féin leadership and our entire party membership. So thank you for having me with you this evening in Athens. Comrades, Europe is indeed at a crossroads. Social democracy has all but collapsed, both politically and electorally, on the continent. And there is an urgent need to build a progressive left alternative and to popularise a new political narrative or new political common sense, which is based upon the vision of a social Europe. I believe that that should be based upon the following key principles. That economies must serve the many and not the few that human rights are inalienable, that the global environment is protected, that Europe should act as a force for international peace and solidarity, and that racism, sectarianism, misogyny, homophobia and xenophobia are all rejected. And these positions should be central to a common platform which expands the political strength of the progressive left, but also to include others on the democratic and the progressive spectrum. The political direction, policy orientation and the increasing need for reform of the European Union, combined with the influence of a neoliberal political and economic agenda, has all fuelled the rise of the extreme right across Europe. And all of this presents a serious threat to the principles of the progressive left. So we need to work out what that means. Brexit is one graphic illustration of how the politics of the conservative right, narrow nationalism and populism has created a perfect storm of contradictions. But as those who follow the dialectic, as those who seek to advance political struggle, we need to assess how from such contradictions new opportunities can and must be developed. And I want to paraphrase briefly Ho Chi Minh, 
when he spoke about the, the storm being a good opportunity for the pine tree and for the cypress tree to show their strength and their stability. Brexit itself is a product of an ideological civil war within the British Tory party, which has destabilised that party since the British state joined what was firstly the EEC, the European Economic Community in 1973. Theresa May's approach to handling the Brexit negotiations since she became the British Prime Minister has been governed by how she manages those divisions within her own party, how she maintains the leadership of her party and keeps the Tory government in power in Britain. And that is the key to understanding the events which have unfolded within the British Parliament in the course of the last week. Outwardly, the British government's conduct of negotiations with the European Union has been chaotic, or so it appears. And it is indeed impossible to predict what may happen next as developments unfold. However, in practice, all of the prevarication and perceived chaos has been about playing for time. In the context of the looming 29th of March withdrawal date set by triggering Article 50 by the British Government, it does seem that the clock is being played down, ultimately to attempt brinkmanship between the Tory party leadership and the Tory Brexit extremists, but also include within that dynamic the British Tory government's allies in the Democratic Unionist Party, which comes from the island of Ireland and is particularly dominant in the north of Ireland. By presenting to these forces a zero-sum scenario, that being that the only alternative to supporting Theresa May's project is potentially to have no agreement with the European Union at all. And all of the economic forecasts, as Demetrius commented in his introductory remarks, suggest that Brexit will be bad for Britain. However, notwithstanding how bad it will be for Britain, its imposition in Ireland will be absolutely catastrophic for the island economy in Ireland and for the regional economic system in the north of Ireland. The entire political thrust of Brexit runs counter to the foundations of the Good Friday Agreement, as Demetrius alluded to, and which represents in itself the architecture of the Irish peace process. That's the significance of the Tory assault through Brexit upon the Good Friday Agreement. It jeopardises and it threatens the basis of the Irish peace process in itself. And as a direct result, it threatens to further weaken the already very fragile political process in the northern state. Brexit without legally binding guarantees for the Irish economy and citizens means more division in Ireland. The imposition of Brexit by the British Tory government on the north of Ireland is inherently undemocratic and anti-democratic. It is contrary to the will of the majority of citizens in the North who voted by 56% to remain within the EU. But it is also a direct byproduct of Ireland's undemocratic and anti-democratic partition enforced by British colonial policy. Partition, the division of Ireland between the North and the South, is the central fault line at the heart of Irish politics and society. Partition, the division of Ireland, has been an abject failure. It was never designed to make the northern state a political or economic success. So the onset of Brexit is indeed set to deepen an existing race to the bottom by further undermining the potential for economic growth and new investment in the island economy. The Brexit agenda alongside waves of Tory, British Tory austerity in the north of Ireland, threatens jobs across all economic sectors, workers' terms and conditions, and any potential for sustainable public services in the north of Ireland. At the same time, the inequality divide in the south of Ireland has continued to deepen, notwithstanding the supposed recovery since the 
financial crash destroyed the southern economy in 28. Huge pay disparities, precarious working conditions and labour unrest all sit alongside a lack of investment and resultant endemic crises in health and education sectors alongside housing in the 26 counties in the south of Ireland. 4,000 children in the south of Ireland are made to sleep in temporary accommodation each week due to the lack of affordable housing in the south of Ireland. In addition, the all-island economic activity, which has greatly expanded as a direct consequence of the peace process and has become a key driver for trade, investment and employment creation on the island, is now directly jeopardised by Brexit. So Ireland North and South faces a perfect storm of adversity. The dawning political and economic reality is that Brexit has changed everything on the island. It has exposed the negative role that partition continues to play in Irish affairs and the fundamentally anti-democratic nature of the union with Britain. At the same time, the British state has been pushed into an unprecedented existential political crisis. Brexit has created a defining moment for the islands of Britain and of uh, Ireland. And all of the established constitutional, political and economic assumptions about the previous status quo have been swept away. International attention, as a result, has now been refocused on the issue, the question, the democratic case for Irish reunification. And new political discussions have begun about the future of Ireland, North and South, and the relationship between Britain and Ireland. Increasing numbers of citizens in Ireland are now looking beyond Brexit and towards the prospect of accelerated Irish reunification. But the fallout from Brexit has also significantly influenced the political discourse within the European Union itself. And the level of interest in and support for constitutional change in Ireland is now at an all-time high within the European Union and across the continent of Europe. The European Parliament and the EU institutions have become strategically important platforms or arenas within which to promote the democratic aim of a united Ireland and to encourage international support for a unity referendum as a mechanism to bring about Irish reunification. And Sinn Féin will continue to lobby and influence to make the objective of Irish reunification a priority for the progressive left and other strands of democratic opinion which are represented within the European Parliament. However, comrades, the left will only be as strong across Europe and in the European Parliament as progressive left and Republican parties are relevant and strong within their national contexts. And the success of a real progressive left alternative depends upon securing strategic beachheads of political strength and influence. And that is why the resilience of the left-wing government in Greece in the face of such huge adversity is so politically important for the left across Europe and indeed the left internationally itself. The progressive left and other democratic activists from across Europe have much to learn from the political experience of Greece throughout the last 10 years and in particular since 2015. Of course, in the first instance, the Greece, Greek government and Syriza in particular carry a huge burden to deliver real sustainable change on behalf of your people. But you also have a leadership responsibility to demonstrate that the left in political power can make a real difference. And in that sense, I echo strongly the words of Panos earlier in his contribution. But beachheads of strength and influence will not be created or sustained without unity and cohesion among parties and democratic forces on the left in Europe. It is an impossibility to think otherwise. Unity and agreement need to be expanded whilst respecting and recognising the unique national characteristics which distinguish various parties and movements on the left. 
So when the question is asked tonight, can we build a progressive front in Greece and Europe? Then I must answer that this work is a strategic priority. Unanimity is not required on all of the issues all of the time. But progressives cannot afford to be disunited. Disunity defeats the left. Political sectarianism and division undermine political strength, solidarity and fraternity on the progressive left. The collective strength of the progressive left in Europe also depends on the domestic relevance and political strength of its constituent parts. And while progressives always need to be in a hurry to make change and in pursuit of a more social and democratic Europe, equally, in equal measure, we must be realistic and we must be pragmatic. The distinction between strategy and tactical positions need to be properly understood by us all. Alliances with others are essential to changing the overall balance of forces. We have a saying in the Irish language, and far nach will lager kahi she ave glick. The person who is not strong must be smart. <laughs> so, So comrades, rigid or dogmatic ideological positions can prevent agreement upon shared objectives and securing the unity which is required amongst the widest cross-section of progressive and democratic opinion. And we also, as revolutionary and radical activists, we need to caution ourselves and guard against becoming philosophers reduced to merely interpreting the world. Our function is to change the world, not only to interpret the world. So instead, our purpose must be upon how we of the progressive left in Greece, in Cyprus, in Germany, and elsewhere, and in the European Parliament itself, can achieve the political power and influence to make fundamental change. In that respect, the political discussion and focus upon an emergent European Progressive Caucus, embracing the left, social democrats, progressive environmentalists is a very welcome initiative. I suggest that strategic consensus among the progressive left and others should be based upon support for national independence, social emancipation, citizens' rights and democratic economic control. The fact is that beyond Brexit, the European Union will continue to exist. And the strategic challenge will be to shift the balance of influence in the direction of securing a new Europe based upon equality, rights and solidarity. And Irish unity must be integral, must be central to such a vision for a new Europe. In the coming months, the progressive left needs to focus upon its collective efforts at maximising representation and influence in the next European Parliament. Comrades, in an era where economic models across Europe serve the interests of the few, the European Parliament must become a site of political struggle. And Gabby spoke about this very, very clearly. But a site or an arena of political struggle within which to raise the need for democratic control of the economy, collective bargaining rights, tax justice, equal pay for equal work, proper trade union recognition across the European Union, the eradication of precarious working conditions, climate change and the creation of new sustainable environmental policies, and global peace and solidarity. Progressives also need to use it as an important platform from which to maximise international solidarity, particularly at this point in time of political and humanitarian crisis for the Palestinian people, but also for those progressive forces which are facing a focus, an onslaught and a move against them right across Latin America and the Caribbean. The strategic battle within the European institutions will of course 
be to combat the dominance of neoliberal ideology and its pervasive influence in the formulation of EU economic and financial policy. For our part, Sinn Féin will contest the European elections in May on a platform which absolutely supports the development and the promotion and the achievement of a social Europe. We will also do so to promote the democratic argument for Irish reunification. In Ireland, Irish reunification is now becoming the defining issue for our generation. And Brexit means that change in the political relations between Britain and Ireland is now unavoidable. While the partition of our country has never had any democratic legitimacy, its continued imposition is no longer sustainable. Partition, comrades, is running out of road. British government policy towards Ireland must change. It is time for historic, decisive and bold leadership to be shown by the British state. And in parallel, the Irish government needs to begin to prepare for the constitutional and political and economic transition towards Irish unity. The Irish government should commence as a member state of the EU27 a discussion with the European Commission and the institutions to explore their practical role and responsibility and support in facilitating a smooth, responsible and, trans and efficient process of reunification in our country. Europe, Europe has a central role to play in the development of the transition to Irish unity. And almost 20 years ago, the European landscape was changed with German reunification. The emerging prospect of Irish unity presents another strategic opportunity to positively transform and realign the politics of Europe. Today in modern Ireland and Europe, there is a battle for hearts and minds about how society should be organised. The old order has failed. And recently, our comrade Demetrius Papadimoulos told me a story from 30 years ago when he was travelling in a taxi to deliver a speech. Demetrius told the taxi driver what he was planning to say at the speech, with the speech. And the wise taxi man replied, Remember, you are a politician, not a prophet. Do not promise me things that it will take 1,000 years to achieve. Make change for me tomorrow. And then Demetrius decided to change his speech. He learned a lesson that day, which has remained with him ever since. Theories about change, comrades, remain just that, unless these translate into concrete change in society. As Andros said, we need proposals and a vision, and we must inspire to create change. People want change which makes a positive material difference in their lives. And that is how it should be. Fair wages, high quality education and health services, free at the point of delivery and a clean environment should not be dreams. These should be realities. Political activists who are committed to transformational change should be grounded in the real world. A united Ireland and a new Europe which serve the interests of the many will not be wished into existence. These need to be made to happen. So consider this. If not by us, then by whom? And if not now, then when? Comrades, these are the decisions which we collectively face. The correct political decision for the progressive left across Europe is to unite around a strategic roadmap. Our challenge, in conclusion, must in the coming months be to develop the breadth of political and social alliances which can change the balance of forces and popularise a new vision for a new Europe based upon democracy, equality and solidarity. Eferisto. Θα ήθελα να ευχαριστήσω τον σύντροφο και καλό φιλοντέκτη.
I would like to thank uh, the comrade and good friend uh, Declan Kaney uh, for the important thing uh, things he mentioned and for the struggle their struggle in order to address the negative consequences of Brexit and I believe that in Greece we are not well informed about Brexit and its consequences and it was a good opportunity the story about the taxi driver he mentioned well in other words he repeats what Andros said before that we want a left that has a proposal uh, for today and a vision for tomorrow and converting uh, today's proposals into victorious battles, uh, therefore making uh, tomorrow's vision more attractive and avoid being seen as profits by citizens. Because what we want is to serve their interests. From what uh, he said in his very interesting uh, speech, I will keep a phrase. Uh, political uh, partitions will lead to the defeat of the left. So we must see how we can join our forces uh, on common uh, targets and goals. And I believe that this discussion with the participation of Panos, Gabi, Declan, Andros, uh, expressing a diversity within the left actually highlights that the path of convergence, uh, common action, progressive proposals under the initiative of the left in order to create broader progressive fronts is not unattainable. It is a goal that we can reach if we take the initiative. And if uh, we decode what we have said in the different uh, presentations and different speeches, we will see that there are convergences and we can create a manifesto that could convince people even outside of the left to join us in order to achieve those goals. So I believe that this panel was very important, very useful, and that I, I believe that we must invest in continuing this dialogue. I would like to thank Gabi because at the beginning of November, by initiative of uh, GUENGL and after proposal of Gabi, they organized a debate with the participation of leaders from all parties of the GUENGL. Panos was also there and Declan was there. Andros was also there. And it was very helpful uh, for our campaign the campaign that we have, uh, we will have in the uh, next months. So now we have 30 minutes, and I propose that we use them as follows. If uh, someone uh, here from the audience wants to ask uh, a question or to make a comment, um, he or she can do that, and then we'll give two or three minutes to each speaker for their final comments about what uh, members of the audience said or about what they heard from the other speakers. Kostas has the floor. Kostas Kubunis. For those of you who don't know him, You're a trade unionist. You can come here and take one one of those microphones. We need the microphone because there is live streaming and interpreting. I will I will speak in Greek. So when we were coming here uh, with Nikos, we were talking about how the left must join its forces, must open up to progressive forces. And I believe that we have uh, actually been neglecting or setting aside our left enthusiasm, our illusion. Uh, and people need that. People need illusion, need hope and uh, some words that have influenced me in the past when Syriza uh, won the elections in January. It was uh, hope, uh, dignity, and justice. Espoir, dignité, justice. So these were the three words that are always with me in my heart. And I believe that taking initiatives 
is something very important because in the left there are many issues to solve. Uh, the right wing uh, is it finds it easy. They just exploit the workers. Uh, but in the left we are debating about how we can do things, how we can put them to practice, we discuss and it's very difficult to reach an agreement and we lose time and people are keep waiting. So we should take an initiative, we should join our forces and as soon as we have re- results we will uh, discuss about uh, what to do with our results uh, given the force that we will have within Europe. And this is a left-wing illusion that we must give to people in order for them to vote uh, for us and and to uh, avoid moving towards hatred and black politics that is gaining ground. Thank you. Thank you very much. For those of you who did not know him, Costas, uh, along with Nikos, is a member of trade unionists in uh, Belgium, in the mining sector, and he's a son of a Greek uh, immigrant, a Greek migrant that went a few decades ago to work uh, in the coal mines of Belgium. And Nikos Quez is uh, a candidate of the uh, party of the European left uh, for um, the European Parliament. He was active uh, also as a leader, uh, as a member of the leadership of uh, the um, Uh, of the trade unions in Belgium and he's a son of a Spanish family uh, that left after the civil war in Spain and uh, moved to Belgium. I talk about that because this is part of our tradition and the strong roots of the left within uh, political movements. Now let's uh, pass the microphone for the next question. Uh, We must use the microphone because there's live streaming Uh, Dear comrades, I think that uh, as as things become more extreme in Europe, and all members of the of the panel agreed on that, uh, our uh, discourse must become clearer. And of course, I'm not talking about something that has been uh, debated in the left, and we have been criticised for being dogmatic. In order to be more open uh, to uh, those who were once uh, the uh, voters of the left, uh, the workers, we must give them very clear proposals and very clear analysis. We must stop talking about neoliberalism, in my view, and we must start talking about capitalism. Uh, what uh, makes um, the vast majority uh, of, uh, popu- of, of the population and workers uh, to reject the left and to move towards the right is the policy uh, of uh, the social democracy. If we do not answer to that as uh, a left, and if we do not tell them that now it's not enough to reform and to reorganize capitalism, but we need to find clear answers, this part of societies will not be recovered. They will never turn to us and they will continue to become radicalized uh, towards uh, the far right. So Greece is an excellent example. During the crisis, the society was radicalized towards the left and it brought to power a small radical uh, power, a radical party, and it raised to power. Uh, This is a a unique example, not only uh, in uh, Greece, but also in Europe and internationally. And as Panos said, Greece must become again a positive example for Europe and the left. And in order to do so, we must radicalize once more our discourse, our analysis, uh, our approach uh, towards uh, those groups of the population and uh, towards uh, the entire Europe. Because if the left does not have a radical program in order to try to reach power in all member states, there will never be uh, a progressive, radical, left-wing correlation in Europe. 
Thank you. Panos Trigalis. The comment is off microphone. I, I, I was excited uh, by the speech of our comrade from Ireland. I would like to invite him tomorrow to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. There was a four-day celebration in Grevena. There was a four-day celebration for St. Patrick's Day. Did you see this? In Grevena. This is the region of Greece. So I propose we do this in Athens as well. We should do, he do it here as well. Personally, and uh, since uh, Yorgos mentioned radical ideas, I'd say that the most radical idea is the uh, truly united Europe. This is an idea that the left should adopt as a whole because it started as an idea of the left, uh, that is, a Europe without borders. And you should not forget that Spinelli, who in 1941, as a member of the Communist Party of Italy, uh, created uh, the Manifesto of 1941, the Manifesto of Entertainment. And he was a prisoner of Mussolini. So the United Europe also encompass, encompasses peace, anti-fascism, and uh, pan-European collaboration, that is, a new relationship between the European Union and Russia. This is the most radical idea. Anti-capitalism is uh, an, another horizon. And we must not lose sight uh, of this perspective. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you both. The last uh, comment, so that we can leave some time for our speakers as well. Two more interventions. Thank you. I would like to thank all the speakers. I would like to start uh, with my thoughts in the memory of Bobby Sands. I would like to thank Georgos Chondros, our comrade from public relations sector of Syriza for uh, this issue he raised. And I would like to stress that, of course, Europe must remain united and must be a Europe of the peoples, of the movements, of social justice, but we must uh, determine how we are going to do this. And I would like to ask the following question to all speakers, and if anyone can answer, um, of course, uh, they can do so. Um, so how, uh, what do we propose in terms of economic management? How does the left, uh, what's the proposal of the left? Do we make reference to Marx? Apart from Thomas Piketty, and his proposal which does not convince me. Can, do we make reference to any other economic theory or economist? How can we achieve this enthusiasm, this illusion uh, mentioned by our comrade from Belgium? How can we revive this illusion if we do not convince the impoverished uh, people of Europe? that we will make it and that we will manage to uh, resolve the impasse uh, that exists right now. Yesterday we had Evo Morales with us here in Athens. He talked about um, the story of Latin America and uh, for Libya. He talked about uh, nationalizations. And I'm asking you, where do we stand theoretically uh, we must form a platform of common strategies, of common goals, in order to have concrete proposals to make, realistic proposals and short-term proposals. So what do we do with nationalizations? Thank you. I would like um, to thank all 
uh, the speakers and all the speakers that uh, participated uh, throughout the two days. I will not repeat things that we discussed uh, earlier. The debate we're having now uh, actually uh, expresses all the concerns uh, of this event and of this uh, conference. Uh, there is just one issue I would like to highlight. A main element of the attractiveness of the far right is that it manages to convince a large part of the population that they are anti-systemic uh, forces, anti-establishment forces. And we know that this is very far from the truth, very far from reality. And what should concern us and what we should try to put to practice is our opposition to that. That is how the left can manage to express a radical discourse uh, that can create certainty uh, to the population that it is an anti-establishment effort. I believe that this is quite complex because our historic obligation that is to address progressive forces outside our political family automatically creates the possibility that our political debate and um, the establishment of common ground might lead uh, to the belief that the left is uh, turning towards institutions uh, or a lust uh, for institutions and the establishment. And this could bring the opposite result from the result that we want to achieve. And instead of radicalizing society um, through expansion and amplification, the society might feel that we are being radicalized instead of uh, trying to maintain our force and defend ourselves in the political game. This very interesting equation of how you can maintain a left-wing orientation by broadening, broadening your alliances is something that we must keep in mind and we must not lose sight of. because. When we get to government and when we get to power, we must uh, keep in mind what will happen the next day. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Kasom Mogadisi. I represent the movement Patrice Emily Lumulumba. And he is a national hero in Congo. And he only managed to remain for two months in power then. And the struggle uh, continues. In the previous uh, panel, I complained about a racist behavior I received from Africans in Europe. What I didn't say was the answer. Uh, he, they attacked me saying that you are from Greece and you are going to destroy Europe, you are going to destroy the Euro. And I'd answer that the word Europe is a Greek word. And then I said that you should wait and see that Greece will give the solution. Uh, for many people, uh, many people around Europe. So the second part of their attack and their criticism was about Golden Dawn. Uh, at uh, the time, there was um, violence in the streets. There were no rights for migrants under um, the, uh, Samaras. And, and uh, they were saying, how can you walk around in Greece? Uh, you have no liberties, no freedoms. So today, uh, we are happy to say that things have changed. I know Syriza and I know how things are and the mentality and the mindset uh, that they have. And I'm very happy and proud that uh, uh, the left movement is expanding throughout Europe. The left coalition is uh, growing and I can now uh, proudly answer to them and give them the right answer. Uh, now, we talked about information. Those people did not know what was happening in Greece, and this is why they were asking. And 
information is not only an issue that has to do with Greece, but it's a problem everywhere. And it is related uh, to neoliberalism. Neoliberalism has control over the mass media and uh, they influence people. I will uh, conclude by saying that I'm very happy to be part of Syriza and I'm glad that uh, under the same values, the same mindset, uh, the same principles, we will make it. Thank you very much for your interventions and your comments. Now I will give the floor to our speakers. Let's start from Panos Skurletis. Please, uh, we have two to three minutes each so that we can keep our time. Right. Um, I should like to refer to an intervention that reminded me past debates and discussions. That's by Comrade George Hondros. And I would like to agree with what he said, but after offering an interpretation, otherwise I will not agree. Right? So I think that um, when we criticize neoliberalism, in essence, we're criticizing the most aggressive form of modern capitalism, in a sense. So if, if I understood correctly, and I don't think that this was in, in their intentions, we should not become involved in a debate or a discussion in which we will be have to choose whether we're anti-capitalist or anti-neoliberalists. And I would like to add that Neoliberalism was that aggressive form of capitalism that renewed its hegemony in um, the world over, in globalization terms. And this is important, mind you, because we need to um, uh, remember that this hegemony, before it was acquired through the adopted policies, um, won the battle at the level of ideas. What Thatcher did when she uh, first came up, she started the battle at the level of ideas, which is why we, as the left, should not underestimate the ideological intervention, the struggle of ideas. But as was mentioned time and again today, quite rightly so, this debate, this discussion, this ideological struggle must be combined by the adoption of those policies that will change the lives of the people on a daily basis by integrating them and incorporating them in a transcendental logic of capitalism. And I believe that this strategic conclusion is a um, um, common place of understanding of all those who are sharing this table and I do hope that uh, this um, um, agreement was uh, shared in all other meetings of uh, the left. This is uh, the first major issue and it was what was mentioned today is the second thing is the need for joint actions for common actions of all European left powers and um, um, ecology and um, environmentalists. It was quite rightly underlined that the power of this multifaceted front is the particularities of each political power that has its own political burden and weight and its own contribution. Lo and behold, if we do not respect these particularities and if we simply reproduce opinions, that wants in, in a hastened way to align all these forces or in, into a single front against neoliberalism or the extreme right. Such a thing cannot have a dialectic power. United Europe, in order for it to have a prospect and a future, we need to look at it as a jigsaw puzzle, each piece of which is different than the tens or hundreds of others, but they're all equally necessary to fit in their place, their exact place, and in order to uh, achieve the final um, um, aim, the final goal, which is an identity of Europe that respects the individual identities, but also promoting the joint and common culture and the joint and common values. Hence, our own efforts must respect the particularities and the specificities of each left power. And I believe that it is with these conclusions that we must manage to make them an innovative, 
radical political debate and discourse vis-a-vis -vis all other powers, we can actually be optimistic. And we can say that this Europe must change for it to exist. Thank you. Thank you, Comrade Panos. Um, Abi Zimmer. Yes, I would like to, to react on, uh, on that what, um, what you demanded, that uh, we have to, as left, leftist forces, we have to, um, to bring in the debate uh, more enthusiasm to go back on that, uh, what in the beginning also of Syriza, when uh, the electoral campaign were, uh, was demanded and was, what was brought in the, in the public discussion, hope, dignity, justice. Um, and I would like also to say, yes, solidarity, that's uh, together. And I think um, that reminded me that we in this year um, had the 100th anniversary of the day when Rosa Luxemburg was murdered. And she is, in, in my uh, understanding, one of the political persons of the last century that very explicitly were demanding that we have to say what is and we have to find the speech and an address, of, uh, ability to address the people that they understand the context of society and that we can mobilize them, that we are able to, to speak about the radical real, uh, policy of realism and, to, uh, um, and not to say uh, we will speak in their name, but that we are standing together with them, that we are in solidarity with them, that we are supporting them, that we are supporting these fights. And this would be very, very in, uh, important for, for us. And for, for this background, and also looking, uh, coming back to the question on uh, what does it mean now? Uh, should we only look to Piketty or so? Is this a real answer? I, I think yes and no. We have to, to look on a broad um, base on, on discussions we have now. Um, and I would like to, to address um, or to, to bring the attention to what we, we had also as first successes in the last, last months, um, that especially um, to stop this kind of privatization of public goods, public services we had in the last centuries, that we have the first positive results of the fight um, against this privatization. That we, have now, that we can now say, yes, um, it, it's possible to reverse this, um, this development, to, to say we have to reverse, we are able to reverse the privatized, pub, uh, privatized services back in public hands. And looking back also to, to Berlin, for us it was a big success that it was possible to, to bring back uh, privatized water uh, distribution back in public hands. It was possible, and now it was also motivating for the next movement that we are stopping um, the uh, um, companies on the real estate markets in Berlin and to, to, to ask them to, to make pressure that we would like to expropriate private houses. And I think this is a very, very important step uh, that we not only speak about it, that we are organizing and mobilizing people to, uh, to ask for that and to go on the streets and to demand it and to make pressure on the ruling policy. And for that, I think, should we work. And in this way, we can also gain back um, the interest by, by others and uh, their ability to work together with us. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Gabby, for giving us actual examples of victorious such uh, um, um, efforts that can um, help us uh, see what um, happens and what um, can happen. Andros, you have the floor. Now, a couple of things as regards privatizations. It uh, has to do with the balance of power at the national level. 
Now, what we managed to do is, working with all other political parties, that uh, we convinced that if they had a different stance, they would stand to suffer political loss. So they were forced, in a way, to work with us. So what we managed to do is, uh, well, actually to pass a bill uh, from Parliament that forbids the privatization of large public corporations and organizations. The efforts of the government will not stop there to actually make privatizations happen. They will seek allies to subvert what we um, achieved. And it will be a constant effort, a constant struggle to uh, stand against their um, um, actual um, um, attempts. Now, without being exhaustive, I would like to say a few things that um, I consider are, impor are very important. First and foremost is to have a clear-cut discourse, clean, clear, without being guided by any temporary um, um, any temporary attempts, any temporary things that we would like to do, and we would like we would need to be um, examples. We need to set the example. We need to come up with proposals that deal with small and big problems of people alike to make their lives better and to give a prospect for a better life. If we succeed there, I believe that we will have taken a big step in the right direction. Now, as regards the management of economy, I should like to remind you that uh, in the time of the uh, great financial crisis, many economists turned to Marx. So we insist that the principal ideas of Marxist philosophy are those that guide us. We do not approach Marxism as a dogma, quite the contrary. We believe that it's a, a tool to analyze everything, to um, um, say and try to change things, and taking into consideration national conditions we try to give solutions to the everyday problems that are of concern to the people. This is the way, comrades, that we're trying to work. Our approach is that uh, all theoretical analyses are fine if and only if they have practical implementation. If not, they're not useful at all. In conclusion, I should like to thank once again Syriza for extending this invitation and to congratulate you for this um, two-day event that I believe has enriched uh, the rationale, the thinking and the problematic of everyone as to how we will best move forward. I should like to thank once again Comrade Andras Kiprianu for the examples and the thanks and everything and I should like to give the floor to my friend and comrade Declan. Declan, you have the floor. Thank you, Demetrius. So to conclude some final observations. Strategy and the clarity of strategy must be at the centre of everything that we do. Uh, <coughs> strategy without unity and cohesion and, and, and a political dynamic which can take it forward will never, will never advance. We should never define ourselves or allow ourselves to become defined by political institutions, but neither should we allow ourselves to be defined by rigid or doctrinaire theoretical positions. If we do, then we have shackled ourselves to positions which will inhibit the broad left, both within the national context and the wider European context, from recognising the opportunity to move and, and to take the type of initiatives that are necessary to move forward. Taking initiatives are absolutely essential. Taking strategic initiatives are key in order to change the balance of forces, but critically to constantly expand the level of popular support that the left and other progressives must rely upon. Because without the people, we are nothing. We are theoreticians and we're prophets. So initiatives 
and clarity of strategy are key to growing popular support, and then in turn to giving us the capacity to exercise political strength. And none of that is possible without a focus upon how we become stronger through alliances. Alliances that work and alliances that have the effect of constantly changing in the short and the longer term the balance of power. Thirdly, we cannot leave people behind. So our ideas, our narrative, our concepts must be grounded in the reality of the people whose lives we seek to change and from whom we seek to appeal to have a mandate. And we need to speak their language. And that means that we ensure that the politics that we advance, the politics that we, adva we, adv we, we espouse, are relevant to their lives. And to that extent, and to conclude, key, I believe, is the concept of the democratic control of the economy. <clears throat> the democratic control of the economy in all of its facets. Because without democratic control, uh, there is no possibility of ensuring that the income is generated to guarantee the exchequer or the budget to put in place sustainable public services, which means that we can deliver on the promise that there will indeed be free health care at the point of delivery, guaranteed education for our children and our grandchildren at a level of excellence which is free for those children. And critically, that we create the foundations in society that ensure that we have welfare systems that protect the poor and the most vulnerable, and that ensure that the elderly are guaranteed sustainable pensions going forward. These are the elements which I think are essential to ensuring that the left develops a perspective, a narrative and a vision which can appeal to and guarantee the investment of the people to provide us with a mandate to bring about the change in the national, the regional and the wider European context. I would like to thank uh, once more our comrade Anders Kibrenos, Gabi Sinber, Declan Kenny, and Panos Kurletis, all the members of this panel. Uh, this was a very interesting discussion. And it gives us food for thought and for action from now onwards, from now onwards, because in less than two and a half months we have the European elections. And I believe that uh, this is a, a very good end for a very interesting two-day event. I would like to thank all of you for staying here until the end and all those who attended um, the conference uh, through the internet. Uh, we will see you in the uh, future struggles. There is here, there are some flowers. We have some flowers for the president of uh, GUENGL, Gabi Zimmer. And this is a show of appreciation and gratitude and love by all those who worked in order to organize this conference and from uh, the entire series.